Hi everybody, this is Julian from RC. Last week, we released Llama Spark, a new Llama 3.1 variant that outperforms the original model. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the model and how we built it. And then we're going to test it locally on my machine with Olama. And then we'll deploy it on Amazon SageMaker on a small GPU instance and we'll run some testing. And you will see why this model, just like small language models in general, are a great alternative to OpenAI models. Let's get started. Llama Spark is a variant of Llama 3.1, 8 billion. So we started from the base model, uh, fine tuned it on the Tome dataset, which is a dataset that RC released a little while ago. And then we merged that fine tune model with the instruct version of Llama 3.1 8b. Okay. And the results are pretty good, you would say. You can look at how um, Llama Spark outperforms Llama 318B Instruct on a lot of uh, different benchmarks. As you would expect, the model is available on Hugging Face and some information in there from the blog post. And we also have uh, GGUF in the quantized versions available for local inference, right? And last but not least, we have the data set that was used to um, fine tune the Llama 3.1 base model. So as mentioned, it's called the Tome, if you're interested. Fairly large, 1.75 million rows, and you can read all about it. So now let's grab a quantized version of Llama Spark and run it on my Mac. Llama Spark is an 8 billion parameter model. So um, there's no need to go to extreme quantization. I went for this one, uh, Q5 AS, right? Which is a very good compromise between, um, I would say, model size and accuracy, right? So you just need to go here, right? And you see the, the model parameters and just click on download. Okay, so I've done that already. We see the model file is just a little over five gigs, which should be very easy to run on this machine. And now uh, using a simple config file like this, I can just go and run Olama create. And now we have our model ready to go and we can just run it. Okay, so let's just do this. So let's ask a question, right? Well, how about that? Is there a relationship between transformer robots and transformer models? So there's actually a connection. Interesting. Okay. All right. Well, in case you didn't know, uh, and you can see, uh, and you can see how fast this is, right? So the again, I've shown you before how to do this, but running those uh, smaller models, uh, particularly quantized versions on local machine uh, is, is just um, is just super sweet, right? And the speed is just, you know, very good. I cannot read this fast at all, okay? So if you're lucky to have a, a good laptop or good machine, uh, you can you can do this all day, right? You can do this all day. Um, how can I optimize inference latency in the KV cache? Let's see, it does here. All right, there you go. Quantization, pruning, distillation, and so on. All right. So very, very detailed answers, very good speed what's not to like okay so you can run local inference all day um but chances are for production you want to run um, in a different environment so now let me show you how we can run this on aws and we'll see how you could actually migrate from openai to this with minimal impact in this notebook we're going to deploy llama spark on aws using amazon SageMaker. i'll use the a really small gpu instance 
for this, very uh, cost efficient. And we're going to run some prompts. Okay, and I'll show you different things. Model deployment is very easy. First, define the name of the model. And then uh, define some parameters, uh, the maximum input for the model. And in fact, RC Spark has a large context window. Uh, you can go all the way to 128K, uh, which is uh, much more than um, the, uh, the original Llama. However, uh, this is limited by our GPU RAM. So I experimented a little bit, and on this uh, small instance, I can't go higher than 8K, which is more than enough for a lot of use cases. But if you want more, if you need to work with bigger context, uh, then you will need um, an accelerator with more RAM, right? So max input will be 8K, total tokens, so input plus output. I've set this to 10K, but I mean, you could you could probably tweak, right? Uh, so let's say I've got a, an extra 2K of output on top of whatever context I'm, I'm passing here. If you, if you want, you can actually tweak this, right? You could have a, a higher input context and a, a, a lower uh, tokens, right? In case you just want short answers. Anyway, 8K will be more than enough here. And I'm gonna enable this, messages API enabled. And um, this is actually uh, the way to set OpenAI compatibility for uh, inference, right? Uh, SageMaker uses the Hugging Face uh, text generation inference server, and it allows you to send inference requests and receive answers using the OpenAI format. So this is super nice. You probably want to do this. Uh, this really simplifies the whole thing, as you will see. Then uh, we create a model object using the SageMaker SDK. Uh, we get the uh, name of the Docker image for um, the TGI server. That's the, the latest version at the time of recording. Okay. And then we simply call deploy and we use a small G5 instance to Excel, which is something like $1.2 an hour, right? Uh, and that's the on-demand price. So you can certainly do better if you have reserved instances or any kind of commercial deal. It takes a few minutes to deploy and now we can run inference. Okay, so we can use, like I said, the OpenAI prompting format, which completely hides the complexity of, uh, you know, the Llama prompting format or the Missile prompting format or whatever format is out there. Um, you know, what I would say whatever the model, whatever the, uh, the LLM, you can just do it like that and, and ignore the, the, the prompt format madness. So just define model as TGI, that's going to be the entry point in the container, and then the system prompt and the user prompt and the max tokens. So let's just run this, and we're doing synchronous inference. So generating the full answer um, in one go and then sending it back. Okay. And then we should be able to print it. Okay, so we have the answer. Uh, we see that's the um, OpenAI format, right? So long answer. Uh, and we have the number of tokens, etc., etc. And of course, we could print it nicely because it's a markdown answer. Okay, so pretty cool stuff. But probably what you want to do is streaming, inf streaming inference, right? Streaming response. You want to have that nice chatbot experience. So once again, uh, you may have seen this before in previous videos. Uh, I took some uh, nice uh, support code from this uh, AWS blog post to, um, to display the streaming response, right? Um, I just tweaked it a little bit for the OpenAI format. And so now I can run a streaming inference request. So same question, except I'm setting stream to true. Okay, so let's run this. Let's invoke the SageMaker endpoint with streaming response. And now we are streaming, right? And this is a much nicer experience. And we can see again, the, the speed is just fine, right? 
And uh, keep in mind, this is not a quantized model here. We're running with the, uh, I would say, the full precision model. And it's certainly generating fast enough on that small GPU instance. Okay. And probably we get the same answer. As you can see, it's very easy to work with these models on AWS. Just deploy them, run inference, you know, no big deals. Uh, you can just take this notebook and tweak it and, and you're on your way. So let's keep exploring um, those models. Um, one question you may have is, you know, is this a really good model? I mean, how does it perform compared to, you know, ChatGPT? So let, let's run a small experiment here, right? So I just run a small query on, on ChatGPT. I did this just uh, maybe an hour ago, okay? And asked a simple question. Uh, is Cybertron the ancestor of deep learning? Okay. And I'm getting an answer, which is, okay, Cybertron is most commonly associated with the fictional planet from the Transformers franchise, right? The robots, <laughs> not with deep learning or artificial intelligence. Uh, if there is any connection between Cybertron and deep learning, it might be through a misinterpretation or a niche reference, etc., etc. So it's not a great answer. I think the um, you know we we got a better answer earlier when we said, hey, is there a relationship between the transformer more robots and the transformer models? So ChatGPT is kind of dodging the question here. It's like, well, I, you know, maybe there is a relationship, but uh, I don't know. And then. You know, it spits out a full page of deep learning glorious history, which is really not what I wanted. This is uh, like a media trained version of uh, of ChatGPT. You know, this technique is called um, block and bridge. When you're embarrassed by a question, you know, you kind of block it and talk about something else. Let's ask the same question to our Llama Spark model. So this is the answer that I get. Um, it's not really better than the, the, the chat GPT answer. Um, you know, it, it tells me, yeah, okay. It tells me a little more what Cybertron is. Um, and it tells me a little bit about deep learning, but okay, still not great. Um, so what do we do next? Well, obviously we use external context. Okay, and I'm not gonna do a full uh, rag demo. I'm just gonna simulate something here. So I just took the history section of the uh, Wikipedia page for machine learning, right? That's this chunk here. And I'm loading this to file. And now I'm passing this as context, right? So same question, except you can use the provided context, right? And I'm passing the context here. So now let's run this, okay? So Cybertron is not the ancestor of deep learning. The term Cybertron refers to machine learning, learning machine developed by the Raytheon company in the early 60s. Bingo! Cybertron was used to analyze sonar signals, electrocardiograms, and speech patterns, etc., etc. So that's the answer I was looking for. Okay. So some of you are going to say, well, yeah, but if you pass the same context to ChatGPT, it would have figured it out. And I would absolutely agree. My point is, why would I work with a really large model, you know, and that could be OpenAI and that could be Anthropic or that could be something else. Why would I use those model APIs that I have little control over that are next to impossible to uh, to fine tune um, and who can also get a little bit expensive when we start scaling things why would i use those things if they actually have no knowledge on my domain right so maybe here i'm obsessed with deep learning history and you would think that those models have been trained on wikipedia and you would think they did pick up that cybertron reference on the machine learning history page Right? I didn't go for something super obscure on a little known website. It's a Wikipedia page for machine learning, right? So ironically, uh, ChatGPT doesn't know about this, okay? So isn't it a better option to work with a smaller cost-efficient model that I can fine tune and align and host on my AWS infrastructure completely privately? And uh, I can add context to that model to make it super 
um, um, relevant on my business domain, right? That's my whole point. Um, those models do not know everything and no model knows everything. Uh, sorry. Um, and the only way you're going to get to high relevance is by adding external context, right? And yeah, if you have a great open source model to write a good story based on that context, even better, right? It's, it's, you know, I can only think of the, of the benefits here. So that's pretty much what I wanted to, um, to show you today, right? Llama Spark, uh, a new state of the art Llama 3.1. And it's very easy to test on your local machine if you'd like. It's very easy to deploy on your AWS infrastructure. You can use the OpenAI prompting format. So you don't have to rewrite um, all, your, uh, all your application code to work in a different way. And as you can see, um, it gives you really good answers out of the box. And of course, if you add your own domain specific context, it gets even better. So SLMs for the win, uh, count on me to keep diving into that area, much more content coming. You know what to do, my friends, keep rocking.